father, the High Crown. Why would not the Khire tribe welcome their guests? The grief of wise Talika's death should be over by now. It looks quite suspicious. Of all the tribes, we travel the farthest. Enduring such a long journey is a great respect. For the departed, wise Tailga and the Kiri tribe. Why would the host disrespect us? Like this, I don't know. They should welcome their guests properly every time. Hold back your frustration. Surely there will be an explanation for all this once we are at the camp. I see that the death of wise Talika has also killed the hospitality of the Khide tribe. Do you welcome your guest like this? Hi, Chief Jarai. You, the Angolmen, are the ones who broke the rules. Didn't the Angolmen kill our great wise Talga and massacre the Saurian leader and his bannermen in the cold mountain valley? Am I wrong, Chief? Wise Talika was murdered in the Khadan lands, not Angol lands. Why on earth would we try to murder the Sarin chief without any proper reason? We are here to discuss the matters, aren't we? A discussion takes many forms. The Sarin princess barely escaped the ambush and swore that Angol men attacked them. Do you mean to say he was lying? I am the incumbent High Chief. Losing your leader is no excuse for disrespecting your High Chief. We shall surely get to the bottom of it at the assembly. We are ordered to seize the angle and Chono's men's horses and imprison everyone except their lords until the matter is settled. Cooperation is expected. Because resistance shall result in death. So be it. Follow me, lords.
Hi, Chief Jarai. I hope you are well. Please sit. You said the death of Vice Talga in Khadan lands is a matter of Khadan strife. Your emissary also said that any incursion along the trade route and no man's land is the matter of the A tribe. Isn't that right? This means the ambush on Saren in the no man's land must be a matter of the A tribes. Kadu. Quite, my lord. If we quarrel, it will be a call for death, not an assembly of lords. The incumbent high chief is one and only Jarai. Why do you act so high and mighty? Keeping the peace is of utmost importance. Squabbling here is not an option. High Chief Jarai, please address the assembly so we can get this started. First of all, we seek unity. We seek the difficult task of unity, not the simple task of collapse. Bring the fire in! I shall speak only and only the truth. By the father's son, the mother moon, and the mighty heavens, I swear. I take the oath. of Sarin tribe, tell us what you have witnessed. How do you know it was the Angol men? This morning, we made camp at the Cold Valley. encircled us and then they and killed all our people. Dear Buranj, run for the Kiri camp and tell them what happened here. This is your father's order. Follow it. My father let me escape and I came here. Kaduov, Kadan tribe speak up. Do you claim men bearing? Angol markings murdered the wise Talika of Kheri? Yes. I was not the only witness. All Kadan men saw them, you know. The great Sivgi as well. Kadu! Stop your howling at once! This bears! The marking of your treachery. You killed my father in your home. And now, now you dare to speak with such attitude? Karakoi. Silence. What is it that you learned from your ritual? Why don't you elaborate?
Now tell me, didn't you evoke the spirit of Tailga? If I have to tell you, then listen. At the ritual, someone desecrated my totem. Why Stelga and the heavens have forsaken the Kiri tribe and me? I have every reason to believe that Khadu did this. Perhaps, disguised as a hostage, you only desecrated my totem, Great Sevji. Silence, lords. We must all let our High Chief Jarai and the elders speak first. High Chief Jarai? Lord Arkhal, you are also to be equally blamed for this. You, you provided the murderers with your own steeds. Kharkui! Your suspicion are beyond reasons. <laughs> if we break the trust among us, these discussions shall end in blood. Our tribe, the Akchit, did not commit such a foul deed. I have decided to imprison all those men because of whom we have lost our beloved second breath horses. It's been two years since we were granted the incumbency of the High Chiefdom. I swear by the name of the heavens that I did not commit such a bloody deed. And I also think there must be some reason behind all of this chaos happened earlier. Let me be heard, my lords. Angols and Chanos have been neighboring tribes since ancient times. I know each and every man of both the tribes personally. Any man capable of killing is away on a definite wolf trial. I swear, on this amulet of mine. A long time ago, your ancestors were robbed on the trade route. And we are all aware of that. Men from both tribes were killed. And I hope you were not biding your time till you attained the chiefdom so that you could take the revenge. Hi, Chief Jirai. Our ancestors took these matters to the grave with them. I would not open the past wounds just because I am the High Chief here. Perhaps you intend to keep your authority permanently and become our monarch. Is that what you want? Khadu! You unruly little cub! Know your meager strength and mule as such. Think carefully on whom you're hurling cold words at. We are here. We are here to judge your crime, aren't we? Don't push your blames to others. So you can avoid judgment. Angol armor, second breath horses of auction, caltrops of Darkhad, aren't they all your ideas? Tell me, Kharkoi. Youngsters, order in the assembly. Blackness of heart in my home like cowing crows. When the spirit of my style entered me, he said the matter is for all eight tribes. He said these words The peace shall be broken, cold steel shall clash. The blood of our kinsmen will be shed as sweat in hot lungs. The blade of my killer is coming for more blood. 
prepare the trusty steeds and sturdy men. The enemy sits beside you, so the spirit has. What does the spirit mean? Who is the enemy who sits beside us? I'm just a medium for the cowing of the crows. Just a shaman who can hear but cannot see. This bloody deed must be settled here once and for all, and the culprit should be punished ruthlessly, in my opinion. Let me in. I must speak with Wise Tailga. I must speak with Wise Tailga. Forgive me, lords. Merchant Ghost Messenger claims that they were slaughtered on the road. Let him in. Let him in. Oh, why, Stelga? Forgive me. Forgive me, why, Stelga? Deliver my lord from evil. Please help me. Have mercy on us. Leech, why Stelga is not present here? Why Stelga? I need to speak with him. What is it that you want? My lord beat me six salvation from why Stelga. Now tell us, what happened? My lord, you are the high chief Jarai. My lord, at high noon, foreign invaders attacked. Our caravan had killed many of our people over there, and I couldn't do anything to protect them. Weren't the eight tribes supposed to keep unity and peace among the trade routes, my lord? Your caravan was massacred. Is Merchant Gauss well? Merchant Gauss was wounded. More than ten men were killed over there. Then how do you describe the attackers who attacked? They had skulls for head, and lastly cruel too. They took the skulls of our head, and no one was alive. They killed all of us. You mean the long extinct? Are you trying to describe White Skull Tribe? How would we know? How would we know, my lord? <laughs> my lord sent me to ask for men for protection and healers for the treatment of the wounded. <laughs> we were not able to predict what was about to come. Wait, it seems. Even for the previous matters, the remnants of the vengeful White Skull, that dangerous tribe, can be blamed. Forgive me, my lord. The leaders of the attackers, his men were continuously chanting his name. The undying, the undying Azar, the undying Azar. I know I have heard this. I heard it with both ears. Now, get out from here. Yes, my lord. Children of the endlessly cruel, dull Satan, heart and brain eaters, the wild cannibals. 
And now, they sneak about the steppes. Father, I shall pursue those murderers and thieves who soiled the holy name of Angol. No, you shall not. Long before your time, the elders of the eight tribes agreed to unite and destroy the White Skull tribe. The justice was served at that time without any problem. Since then, the eight tribes have been united through thick and thin in their difficult times. Today we shall appease our ancestor spirits by feasting on the head of Lord Khadran of Sarin. And hear me out. After two suns have passed, we shall have the heads of High Chief Jarai of Ongol and Arsai of Chonos for dinner. <laughs> Remember all of you, I am the Undying Azar and the second son of the Chief Dal Setsen of the White Skull Tribe. The eight tribes of the Steeps thought our clan was destroyed. They reveled in our extinction. It is high time. They will know we were just biding our time and the hour of our bloody vengeance has come. I killed Wise Telga, the leader of Kerry, at Khadan Lands. I am also the one who killed Khadran, the leader of Sarin, at the Gold Valley. And after two sons, I am going to ambush Jarai of Angol and Arsai of Chongos at the dreaded place where my father was murdered and put them to the sword. The eater of men with the heart of bronze, the white skull shall rise again! Attack the Kiri tribe! Attack on the Kiri tribe! Destroy the Action tribe! Destroy the Action tribe! Cut the Khadan down! Finish on the Khadan tribe! Annihilate the theft! Clear all the death tribe! Let us pledge to eat our enemies' hearts and drink from their skulls! Eat our enemies' hearts and drink from their skulls! Now it is time for the feast. Then, the scalp and pin it on the black banner. Forgive me, lords. We have brought the bodies of Sarin men who were killed in the cold valley. Gaze upon them. Young lady, stay. Your heart can't handle it. The dead rest in the sun, but the living move on. Stay. Ha <laughs> ha
is a fallen blade. None of the steppy tribes wield such a blade. Check each and every fatal wound. Please inspect it personally, Shaman. Listen, daughter. A woman ought to avoid the sight of blood. Every wound reeks of a foreign blade. Angol, Khadan, none of the eight tribes were involved in this matter. These deaths are the beginning of many others. Countless lives shall be ruined and blood shall run in rivers. The only ones capable of killing chiefs are the ruthless white skulls. Indeed. We must pursue the remnants of the white skull and hunt them all. I will find my father's head so his soul can be put to rest. Do not let your heart full of vengeance cause you to act in haste. Your survival is of utmost importance. The time for vengeance will come as long as you breathe. Khadran's bloodline will end with you, young lady. The shaman said it was the foreign blade. The butchering seems like the deed of the extinct white skulls. And my suggestion is that we should aid Merchant Goes, and we need to question him as well. Lord Cardo is in the right. The eight tribes are responsible for the peace of the trade route. But Merchant Goes Carvans was destroyed. He has seen the faces of white skulls as well. He may not recognize the bones, but may know the blade. So we should bring him here in front of you. Kiri men, prepare yourselves. Bring the merchant right at once. Lord Arkai, you must bid your bannermen spread the news to the other tribes to make them aware of it. White skulls might Strike anywhere next. Yes, High Chief. I will send all the men at once. In light of this tragedy, the title of the Sari Lordship is
फर्स्ट डाउन टू यू यंग लेडी मे योर हार्ट सी फॉर एंड वाइट Bring your banner to the house of the assembly. Starting today, we must appease the black banner with the heads of every lord of the eight tribes, because they banded together against and kill our fathers and exterminate our clan forever. I shall hold them accountable for now. The white skull shall not scavenge with dogs anymore. We shall not sneak in the shadows. and avoid people anymore our ancestors once conquered far and wide and ruled over these vast lands they were deceived and killed by them and now is the hour of vengeance we shall eat their hearts and brains and shall regain back the glory of our fathers we are going to believe their women murder their men and bring an end to their lineage leaving no trace whatsoever of their existence remember i am the undying azer remember we are the unyielding unrelenting white skulls we are the unyielding white skulls we are immortal It's only these few people what's left of the white skulls. If all of us perish in the battles, we will all be truly and completely extinct. Women and all the children should stay behind. How have we survived? You forgot. If we are destined to survive, we shall escape the piles of corpses. If we were destined to die. 
we would have already perished by now. These women and children are all white skulls of our tribe. We rise together or we perish together. At least we have a few children. <laughs> are you afraid of fighting? I can clearly hear your pounding heart racing out of your mouth with fear. Even these women and children aren't as afraid as you are. It would be better if you stay in their place and sue something for us. But I... I shall never look back at you ever. Understood? Did you summon me, Elder Khunchir? Oh, yes. Forgive me for not asking your wellness, due to the grim nature of the assembly. Are you doing well, my lord? I am pretty well now. How is your land now? Pleasant indeed. I hope you're not too tired from this long journey. You should have sent a messenger instead of torturing your own old body. I can manage pretty well, son. Yes, this assembly is perhaps the last one for me now, I think. This old man hasn't forgotten your father's aid yet. I put my heart and soul into crafting this. Do you like it? Dear Lord, my father would never want anything in return for that. Why would you trouble yourself like this? <laughs> I really didn't. Just happy. Your father is with the son now. I know quite well that your father would never ask anything in return. But you know, I've been thankful for that assistance all my life. Thus I made this tears up. I insist you to take this, my son. All right. Thank you so much for your kindness. Well, also, before I ride here for the assembly, and I also observed the heavens. Yeah? I saw a bloody star. It's a sign of troubled times. Do you agree? We might be facing a lot of events that wouldn't let our horses rest. Or perhaps these useless eyes of an old man saw something that is meaningless. We had twins from two of our mares. So this humble son also had concerns about our troubled times. 
Mm. Some of our lands weren't fortunate enough to face much sunlight this year either. It's almost like the summer has turned its back on us. My lord, the bandits took us by storm. We were not able to do anything against them. He is the one who, who calls himself the Untying Azar, suddenly attacked us and terrorized my caravan. They killed many of our innocent people. I hope you're well. The merchant goss has arrived and the assembly is called once more. Your presence is required. All right. Seems like we came here to hear from the foreigners. Yes, indeed. We must rely on foreigners on an internal matter. How do I... How do I ever trust the safety of this trade route? Of the steps who were to protect my people? I lost all my goods and wares and not only just that, also my people along with it. Tell me what can I do now? <laughs> Your personal safety comes first. You are lucky that you are alive. The eight tribes were almost brought to a brink of war without any doubt. Do you hear the passing of wise Talika? Yes, I heard. <laughs> Where are the heavens of the steppes, my lord? Who would ever dare to kill the great shaman of the heavens? Wise leader of the people and the great seer of the steppe, my lord. Generous. Lord Khardan of Sarin, who holds a great feast in my humble abode. When he came to trade, he was killed by these people. That's what you want to say? What carnage am I witnessing? So much blood and so much death. Fetch that black bull. Blood soaked blade is hard and really cold, harder than bronze, colder than ice. Merchant cause, you must calm down. We want to settle on several matters before we leave for our lands. It's necessary. White skulls may attack any tribe behind our back. So please leave your grief outside before you come in. Now tell us about the blade. You were talking merchant goss.
let me tell you according to the shaman the hard and the cold plate that they carry should only be named as the moor and nothing else i have seen the plate but i have no expertise to analyze the properties of this plate this plates are made from temur steel and have become very common and we won't be able to trace these people distant tribes they buy a great deal of bitter powder to forge such a weapon bitter powder yes my lord to produce such hardness the southern bitter powder is in great demand these days they are considered very useful resource to more to more okay so do they make blades out of bitter powder allow me to apologize my lord but i'm not aware of the process i just heard that a lot of bitter powder is required so tell me where did you sell the bitter powder and from where do they produce this tamur blade from the distant sangcha kingdom beyond all of the four seas the people have been forging plates out of temur everyone buys bitter powder from there my lord temur is useful not only for plates smithing but all sorts of wares to that could be very useful and i didn't knew about that my lord beyond the 33 tribes of the steeps blades are being forged out of temur and i must say it is a sign of war and we must be prepared if my lords wouldn't mind then i would request you to give me one of your blade fetch the blade I bought this blade in the narrow lands when I went towards the north and I had my eyes on it. This is the smell of the blade that killed all sarin men i must also say something else while wise telga was on his way to khadan lands he rested in our town for a night he spoke in riddles about something that no one could understand in order to keep peace among our great lord i shall say no more forgive me my lord now tell us what wise telga spoke of wise telga said this year is the year of fate the heaven shall shake and the earth will crumble i i must find the prophecy receiver of fate from the steeps so i shall ride alone in this year of fate a sun blessed by the heavens shall be the one who will hold the absolute power the one and only if a young wolf 
is capable of defeating the Alpha. The heavens shall be pleased with the wolf. He spoke as such. Well then, it's the year of faith. We have waited for thousands of years for this to come. As been told, we see the stars burn red and grass wither with no summer. These are the real signs for us. You are right, Elder. The trial of heavens befall the earth and a thousand hardships will occur, they say. The one who is capable of foretelling the ear of fate is none other than the wise Telga of the steeps. So we now, the steep people, must overcome the trial of heavens. In the new year of fate, new grass of the morning withers before nightfall. Cold winter burns like the Gobi in summer. Cold winter freezes the cattle to the bone in midsummer. How are we going to deal with this? Hi, Chief. They said the last year of faith came a thousand years ago, my lord. If the chosen one is sinister, the rivers will be full of blood. The mountains will be covered in bones. Tears of women and children will run like rainwater. Men will start killing men. And there will be no peace in the entire region. The worthy one must have overcome great hardships. His spirit, mind and body. As well as his will, sight and reach must be perfect and balanced. As you all know. Now merchant gods, tell us who among the steep men did wise Talika declare as the worthy one? Tell us. I did not fully comprehend what he meant by wolves fighting. I understand the worthy one is the one and only winner of the wolf fight. My lord. Wait a moment. I just remembered the murderers of Wise Telga did not bear the Wolf tribe's equipment. And that's what concerned me. And I suspect that you, the Wolf tribe man, are involved from the beginning. Am I right? Kadun, you just shut your trap. If the tale of the young wolf against the Alpha has any truth to it, you would be the young wolf. You fancy yourself as the fang of the deer tribe. Isn't it all too obvious? Lowly peasants and uh, stranded banner men like you shouldn't be allowed to speak freely at the assembly, should they? <laughs> Kadun! Control yourself. I did not allow you to speak here. Hi, Chief Jirai. I think you should know your son's manners. Perhaps some young, hot heads plotted such atrocities. Deer and wolf tribes call their youth wolves, no? And about my title, Fang, is a mere commitment to knowledge. If you people are suspicious of me, a Khadan tribe absolutely would not mind turning down our turns in high chiefdom for all eternity. This old man thinks your words do no more 
than breaking the peace. Thus, I propose that we must appoint 10 men from each tribe and track down those white skulls and bring justice to each and every one. As for Crow tribe who lost their leader, each of us should leave a noble hostage here. My father is dead. I don't think there is any hostage other than me. If I am to stay, who would lead our bannermen to bring justice to the White Skull remnants? Listen, old man. Why do we have to leave our hostage in Crow tribe? No matter how we contemplate on the matter, who is to say which tribe concocted such plot? The extinct White Skull and Crow tribe came from the same ancestors. And for this, I don't have to explain further. My father was killed mercilessly in your home. How dare you smear your filthy deed back to us? Yes, we were the same tribe, but our crow men joined the eight tribes and fought the white skulls to death, didn't we? The enemies would have enjoyed seeing us squabbling like children. Wise lords must know that this crime was committed to break peace among our tribes. We must adhere to the old saying, one's head may shatter, but only in its own helmet. I would like to thank you, Merchant Gross. Go to the guest house and get well soon. I shall thank you, great shaman. But this time, please allow me to return to my camp, my lord. I, I request nothing else but only to fulfill your promise and keep the trade route peaceful for everyone. Place your guards in my camp until this matter is all settled. It has been decided, and we should all go now. We discussed the matter, but there is no conclusion. You all know the murder. It was done brutally in Khadan land. And today I give you my word to track down and capture that bastard White Skull who has done it. And I humbly request to all the elders to hold tight until the next full moon. And I give you my words. If I fail to capture the White Skull remnants and break my promise, so I will have my head cut off and be delivered to you. I think one month would be more than enough to calmly contemplate on all the given matters here. High Chief Jarai, please set the time for the next assembly and also let us know where should we meet again. Khadun, I hope you realize you are putting yourself in a very dangerous position. If in one month, if you fail to deliver on your promise, all blame shall go to Khadan tribe. I can see it is already on us, whether we have done it or not. All I have is one month, so every small step counts. I shall seal my promise with blood and only blood because now I have given my words. Khadun, an oath. Hi, Chief Jarai. Now, I'm going to ask for your blade. You can seal it with my blade. I can make a counter promise to you as well. If you, Khadun, fail to capture the White Skull remnants in a month, then I'll show you who I am. You shall lay your neck in front of me, Khadun. But if you succeed and do capture them, 
then you can have my head instead. Irte. If I can't roar like a lion, then I can't cower like a hare, Lord. I seal this promise with my life as well. In front of incumbent High Chief Jarai and the eight tribes, I seal my promise with my life to make sure it's done. Their promises should not go in vain. We should be taking away their belts and hold them and attach it to a curse. You men have made an unbreakable blood oath in Crow Lands. I curse whoever falters and goes back on his word to burn in agony. Since the curse hungers for blood, if you both stay true to your promise, then the curse shall be lifted. If not, then the curse shall be realized. Give me your belts. Spirit, hear me. Listen to me, Fire Spirit. Listen to me. Hear these lesser men to swear. Hear them. And curse them if they get back away. Curse them. Burn them if they back on their words. Burn them. <laughs> Bind by life. Bind by life. Burn! Burn them! <laughs> Your promises were received by the fire spirit. Those belts are now cursed. Do you understand? Get on with your deed. Promise makers, take your belts and go ahead for the mission. Belts may be lost, but the curse will not. On what's from here, remember that. This assembly will be in recess for a month. The date of the reconvening shall be delivered to you by messengers. The assembly now adjourns for a month. Father, I promise you, I shall retrieve your head from undying Azad, the remnant of the white skulls and give you peace. Where are you going? The one I am engaged to? An engagement may be in place, but I am not your bride yet. I am not yours. Will never be. Boranch. So, where are you going? 
I shall track down the killer of my father and get revenge on the white skulls. Wait. High Chief Jarai decreed that you'll stay in Crowland. So do you intend to break the law and kill the white skulls? My father and my banner men were killed like animals. So I don't intend to stay here seeking comfort at all. I will have to retrieve my father's head. Right now you don't know where the enemy is. Kadun of Khadan and Irtay of Angol have taken a vow that they would find and put the enemy to the sword. After all, revenge is not a woman's business to deal with. Listen and return at once. I can't. Not even for a moment. I can't stand to stay here at all. Make way. Get away. I Kharkui. I have been yearning for you ever since I was a child. I prayed to the sun and the moon just to be with you. If delicate and bloody matters hadn't occurred like this, I... I would have visited your house with my father and... respectfully asked for your hand for wedding from your old man, Khadran. But destiny had its own plans. My deceased father told me that you will come to ask for my hand in marriage. But I no longer have my father to give me away and no land to return. Let me go. If I spend my life seeking revenge, that would have been my father's wish. Be patient, will you? I ask you to be patient. That is not your father's wish. If you are slain in the quest, your father's bones won't rest, will they? And Sarin tribe shall be no more. Just think with a cool head, will you? Wear wisdom in your head. And fury on your back, that is the need of the hour. Well then, until I come back, Harkhoi, keep my Sarin tribe safe. Then I shall fulfill my father's promise to be your wife. But you should refrain from your narcotic pleasures and accept me with a clear mind. If you do these two things, only then I shall bear the name of your wife and be with you forever. I will do these two things wholeheartedly. That's a promise. I swear to you. All right then. I have to leave now. Wait. My Buranch. Remember my whole heart beats only and only for you. Always remember that. Stay safe.
Itai, Itai! That toothless cub, he dared to count my oath ridiculous. Khaldun, you made an unbreakable oath. Why would you bring such peril to yourself? Great Sevgi, you think that I am weak? You think I can't track down the white skulls and bring them to justice? You just wait and watch Great Sevgi. Tracking down those cunning white skulls is just one thing. Making a promise with your head in front of the eight tribes is another. You know it very well. Khadan is not the culprit. Then why would you restrict my word? But that Irtai, son of High Chief Jarai, and Kharkhoi, son of Vice Talga, they did not respect me as a chief and constantly barked their words at me. Now tell me why did you remain silent? My lord, you are the head of the Khadan tribe. If you act like a foolish young man under the protection of your father, they will berate you even more. Please remember this. Once I will return, I promise. I will take my armed men and we will annihilate all the white skull blood, even the infants. We will make them answers for all their crimes. Bloody white skulls. Our Khadan banners should be paid homage at the next assembly. Whenever that happens, I'll make sure of it. Arsai, who is from all 33 major and smaller tribes you think is worthy of being the worthy one. So tell me, if you have someone trustworthy in your mind. This old man's wish reaches beyond this world, but my physical reach is barely beyond my home. The worthy one must be a well-tested man who overcomes many difficulties and cultivates the perfection of his mind, body and spirit. If the fate falls in the hands of a malevolent man, thousands of years of suffering may befall the steeps, I fear. There is one more thing. Might I say that your son, Itai, could be the worthy one. My son Irtai is not the right choice. Your son is a courageous man. He is just and very brave. The one with courage and fortitude. With no wisdom cannot be the worthy one. But in fact can become a destroyer. Since you gave your word, and made a promise, I must ride with you. I have no choice. <laughs> Allow me to be your wisdom while you are in a rage. <laughs> if I'm going to bring an old man to a place of war, I will look like an impotent child. <laughs> That's why you should remain in your land and support our Khadan tribe. A battle is rarely won by strength alone. If you have strength and wisdom in your hands, you lose less and tend to gain more. You speak like you are talking to a hopeless fool who don't know anything. I probably should have left you as a hostage with the Crow tribe. My lord, forgive me. I 
only wish wellness for you and our khadan land i think of nothing else for so long in the name of peace you stayed my hand and dulled my words but now i am a man and a chief not a child anymore who can make his own decisions you should know by now your words bring no more wisdom to me great sergey kadun do you intend to separate yourself from me and get rid of ever since you were born i did nothing but support you and take care of you the chief you are now is because of my training so your job of babysitting is at an end don't try to control me anymore and i really hope you do as i say in the fateful years noble squirrel and the say maintain our alliance with angol and the wolf tribes and i propose that we join our houses as early as possible to keep the peace between us i would wed by sirhon to your son irtai <laughs> grow quite wise haven't you your daughter sorkho and my younger son meklain are in love with each other as i'm sure you have noticed since they are in such a way to keep the peace like a wolf and do your surkhun and my younger son meklain should get married soon do you mean to leave the lordship of angol tribe to your sons hi chief jarai is that what you thinking in that case wolf tested man may not follow him you are aware of that right i am aware even if you pass over the younger son for the high chief its dominion over the tribes that matters in the long run you can rest easy chief jarai whatever happens is the will of the heavens it is not in our hands father we struggled a long enough got to pick up the speed before sundown arthai let's go son forgive me for overstepping but i must say this over a period of time you have reckoned your sight but your mind's eye is blind to the future i had to tell this to you shut it Your insults are beyond reason. All the healers of the steepies failed to heal my eyes. You should know nobody helped me. It was me, but I, I healed my eyes with my courage and determination. And now, nobody can control me. Ah! such fine wares please see our lord hunter bordo 
बिफोर वी टॉक अबाउट बिजनेस आई नीड टू टेल यू अबाउट समथिंग सो प्लीज लिसन यू ग्रीडी गर्स यू इंटेंड टू गेट मी ड्रंक आउट ऑफ विथ्स एंड गेट अ फेवरेबल ट्रेड हाँ फाइन फाइन पोर मोर ट्राइंग टू गेट मी ड्रंक ही इज लाइक क्वेंचिंग द डेजर्ट हंटर बोर दो है यू आर रियली अ वाइज मैन हियर मे आउट द रीजन वाई द रीजन वाई आई वॉज बींग समन टू द असेंबली ऑफ एट ट्राइब्स वॉज नॉट द मर्डर ऑफ वाइज टेलगा ऑफ खिरे ट्राइब बट इट वॉज द मर्डर ऑफ योर सर इन चीफ एंड ऑल्सो हिस्स his banner man my lord what when this poor merchant was in the crow land i saw the bodies of your chief and your banner man with my own eyes the remnants of the extinct white skull tribe carried forward blades and they ambushed your banner man in the cold valley damn you You damn swindler with evil words! I will. I should tear you to pieces for saying this. How dare you hide this from me? Why? Why would you even hurl your fury at me? I only speak the truth that I saw, my lord. Well then, Chief Hadran. and his banner men are dead what of princess buronch oh come on tell me what you saw my lord i saw that the chief hardan's head was taken by the white skull army but fortunately princess buronch she is safe and secure she is in She is in Crowland right now. You do have weapons, right? I will trade all my furs in exchange for your weapons. <clears throat> Please forgive me, but we are forbidden to trade any weapon by the decree of the incumbent High Chief, so we won't be able to accept your fur. We have absolutely no weapons to sell. Forgive me. Decrees and laws. What decrees and laws? Or tell me what good do they do? If you don't sell me weapons for revenge, mark my words. I will kill all of you. Please do not kill us. How are we able to trade weapons that we don't even have with us? but as an exception this time to express my grievance of your chief's death i will dismantle my trading post my lord you you fear the bloody days that are to come and intend to run away with your extremely miserable lives please be sir and my lord i can't do anything to mitigate your loss but this time you can take as much salt as you want and you can return them on your way back then you can go to the crow land i would advise taking princess boronch under your protection my lord and you will take care regardless of the danger oh merchant goss If you're really in so much grief, you can give me those horses to carry goods. I will send them all back once I return.
Take good care of my ride. Okay. Was your journey safe? Indeed it was, my dear. I haven't seen my son, Shalu. Boys are probably making jilps on the rocks. The boys? Khavtai from Angol came here to see Shalu. Khavtai from Angol is here? Did he tell you if he's traveling for an important matter? Not really. He just wanted to see our son. I'm very glad that they both are getting along and bonding. All a man needs is a good friend and a trusty steed. We know he will never ride a horse, but at least we know he has a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Did you travel where Chifar Khan? Do you have any orders? Bring in the grim men. Bardai's sons. For sleeping on their watch and allowing thieves to steal the second breath horses. For foul deeds shall be punished by being dragged by the reaper at sundown. At the time of the execution, bring everyone in the tribe to witness justice. Yes, yes sir! sir! Arsai, do you remember that pass? Like it was yesterday. We cornered the strayed remnants of the Dal Sassan, White Skulls, and vanquished them. If it is not your battle wisdom, Dal Sassan would have feasted on my skull. <laughs> I feel uneasy, too silent. I see scavenger ravens in bigger numbers now. It is either a predator in ambush or there is an enemy is waiting. Irtai, go now and alert our men. We must be ready for the battle. Wait! You must stay behind with your son, High Chief. If the high chief falls during such turbulent times, the eight tribes will be in chaos, like ants from a broken colony. I shall take the lead with my men. If it is an ambush, flee by a different route. Son, you make sure your father reaches home safely. Arsai. If I die, you have to make sure. My Sarkhan leaves in the land of a desire. Let my daughter live with a full family.
Marsai. <laughs> the old wolf. <laughs> Marsai. <laughs> Say your words. And show your face. I want to tell my ancestors by whose hand I met my end and returned to the sun. So the punishment may be true. Go and tell them that it was the undying Azar, the younger son of Dal Sisan, of the White Skull tribe, which were smashed like beetles connivingly. Azar. Azar. It was my peril to let you live and your fortune. Now you just kill me already. What are you waiting for? Your wolf tribe men get rid of cubs while they are young. So tell me then, why did you leave me alive 30 years ago? Because we don't have hearts of stone and cold blood. Your father was a lot more of a man than you are. You ambushed me in a place where he fought like a man on a horseback. Yes. The Valley of Black Willow. The story of my father's death was like mother's milk to me. And that is the reason I waited for this day. I kept on burning in the fire of vengeance and I shall have it. So you mean to say white skull, babies, suckle milk? So why do they say you suckle blood? The blood of my enemy tastes like sweet milk to me. Only to you. I give a chance to return to your ancestors with all the body parts intact. Consider it as a favor for letting me and my mother alive on that fateful day. Charai, tell me where Haichi fled to. If you do, you will have your brain in your skull and you will die with your heart in your chest. Did you think the old wolf would betray a friend just for a life? <laughs> Do as you intend to. I appreciate Your commitment. Your body will return to the sun as a whole. Let me feast on our size head. I deserve to eat the man who killed my father. If you're starving that much, there's a lot of brains to be found out there. Our size character reminds me of my father. I'll return him to the sun as a whole. Mount Chief our size body on his horse and direct it to his home. Nobody will touch him! Arsai and High Chief Jarai, both of them left the Kiri land together. He must be near somewhere definitely. The smell of his blood is boiling my blood. All of you go and track him down. Let us bring an end of the Angles! End the Angles!
I sent Bannerman to scout to alert us of any contact. I'm really worried about Chief Versailles and Wolf Tribes Bannerman. We will know when we will return. You should preserve your strength, father. My son Irtai, when we will be back at our camp, you should ready our men and arms and leave for Khadan tribe. It is very necessary in current situation. You should collaborate with Khadun to finish off the white skulls. Collaborate with him? Do you really mean it? Have you forgotten that, that Khadun and I swore a death oath against each other? Son, we don't have time for argument. We must be united and prepare ourselves for any situation. If you had listened to what I said, then today we would have had men and arms when we departed for the assembly. If we did so, we would not be fleeing the pathetic remnants of the white skulls. I would have stood before the eight tribes with Azar's head in my hand. Your stirrup strap has snapped before the journey. Didn't you suspect anything, father? <laughs> if we had arrived at the assembly and that too without their knowledge, my son, then we will be blamed and that too without any reason. Who cares if we get the blame? As long as we are alive in this land. The men of the extinct white skulls had the same ideal of what you just said. If we are united, we prosper. And if we break, then we perish. Just remember this law. The ruling jurisdiction is in your hand, father. While we are busy discussing with our mouths, three of the eight tribe leaders were sent to the sun. Don't you think it's time to talk with the blades? Answer me, father. Shut up! <laughs> the one who doesn't know who he should bloody his blade on brings peril to himself. If, if the blade doesn't find its enemies, it finds its owner. I could never forfeit my life for Khadun's success. Once I return back, I shall ready my men and finish off the white skulls with my blade. If you don't think of me, as your father then, think of me as the High Chief. Don't forget that my command is the law for not only Angol and the eight tribes, but for all 33 tribes of the steppes. I am going to feast on the Bannerman skull! <laughs>
Why do we stall? High Chief fled with his son. Let's pursue and kill them. They surely will manage to cross the border of Akchin on their horses. If we attack the Arkhal of Akchin and his men, will crush us like beetles. So we must stay here for a while and head back. I almost had the High Chief's head in my own hands. <laughs> you will definitely have your chance to feast on his head. I will not let him see the sun for long. My arrow was dipped in the serpent's venom. So think of Angol tribe as extinct. As the sun goes down, we shall celebrate the end of the Angols for sure. Angol is dead! The steed that you lost was ridden by the bandits who killed the wise Delga. I was scorned at the assembly. The action name was disgraced in front of all. Horse keeping is not just about herding, but about keeping a watch on our land. So you shall be returned back to the sun by the reaper's tail. Say your last words. Lord, this poor man regrets deeply. My children, I only beg you not to hold a grudge against my children. My Lord. Lord Arkhal, I, the youngest son of Partha, am the one who lost the steeds. Throw me to the reaper and show mercy to my brother, for he has a family. I don't feel merciful today. But I promise you that your brother's children won't be punished for his crime. They are coming! The great men are coming! My Lord Arkhal, I must say, the Reaper is absent. He is nowhere. Sonic and Panek, these two guys must have fooled around and alarmed the Reaper. Lord Arkhal, Panek and I wouldn't dare to fool around with the Great Reaper, trust me. If I may be blunt, your son Shalu. Have mercy, my Lord. We were too afraid to tell. We didn't know what you would do to us. The Reaper and Shalu. What? What did the Reaper do to him? Oh, good heavens. That is my son. Isn't that a sign of the heavens? You know, I have been praying. It really is. The year of fate. My son. My son was the Reaper Master. Release all the prisoners! The heavens have sent us a sign. My dear son Shalu has always been the Reaper Master. I would not spoil this sign with blood all over it. Release everyone, even the stablemen. And now we all 
celebrate together. Carcass? Father, I'll find an antler. We must try and drain the venom, which is dangerous for you. I'm fine, son. The arrowhead went through, so it should be okay. Father, drink this. It will help you. <laughs> and return home. Watch over wolf and angol people. Be careful, my son. Pass the chief dam to Meglin. Chief Arsai has been killed. And you, you are suffering from a wound when the wolf and Angleman hear about this. They will be in total chaos like ants from a broken colony. Hard times are ahead if a coward like Meglin holds the chiefdom. It's the end of all. And I... Son... Not as your father... But as your high chief... I order you... Listen to me. Father, 
Like you said, I, not because you are my father, but because you are the high chief, I'll take your life. In the times of danger, I can't bear to pass the chiefdom to a weakling. Please join in. Women out of this room. I have a private matter to discuss with Merchant Goss. You two go out as well. I know that you have the black powder brought from the narrow lands. Give me a bit as well. I have told you before. I did tell you that I only had a pinch of it. You have to listen to me. The deceased wise Telga. He visited us on his way back to Khadan tribe. And he castigated me terribly. Yeah! He blamed me for the addiction of toxic powers that you use. I have finally made my mind. 
I don't have it with me anymore, Kharkui. I don't want to talk about this with you, no matter what you do. I can't seem to find that faceless beggar vagrant that you sent to me, Goss. My entire pod is paining and my bone marrow is also gagging for it now. You, you give me that black powder or else I will destroy your camp like I did to the white skulls. <laughs> Karkui, calm down. It's true that I don't, I don't have the black powder with me anymore. <laughs> Him, during the moonless night, the faceless hermit will speak to the heavens, the one that is in the cold valley. The faceless hermit is over there. During the night, you should go to the cold valley. If you have lied to me at all, as soon as I return, I shall quench the thirst of my blade with your blood. <laughs> From now on, my own son, the Wolf of Steppes, will forever be remembered as the legendary Reaper Master. So I am immensely joyful, like I've held the heavens. Die of Ango. As a symbol of your eternal friendship with my own blood, my hero, my son, I give you this extremely rare, strong spirit. Uncle Sonic and Panic has been a great help for me to mount the Reaper. Lord Arkai, young Shalu exaggerates. Because we did no great deeds. My lord, these poor blokes did not perform miracles of any sort. If we have helped even a bit, it's a privilege. <laughs> even a bit of help is important to a great feat. For your immeasurable help for my son, I will personally filter it for you. Enjoy your drink. <laughs> we both thank, thank you, you for, for the blessing of Lord Alka. <laughs> we thank the Lady's Grace. <laughs> Have you been for such a long time? I'm aching everywhere and my my bone marrow boils. Give it to me. Give it to me. I 
Thank you, sir. I found where my father is, so his body and soul would separate. Give it to me now. Give me plenty of black earth as you had promised to me. Give me. The fateful time is high. Har koi, you will be the worthy one. So you can't afford to let this black powder drive you. The heavenly trial shall descend upon the earth, and the blood shall run in rivers. You must prepare for a. Great Exodus. Refrain from the black powder. You also must keep your crow tribe away from the war. And after that, as you will return, I have delivered the fate. You will be the Khan under the heavens and rule all oh, tribes. <laughs> the will of the heavens I I shall only oblige Kargoi my son why did you assist in my killing the white skull remnants Azar and Kadan got help from you to Kill me. Why? Why? Father, give me your great shamanic powers. I won't give my powers to you. Not even the chiefdom of the Crow tribe. Father dead, what an irony. Look at this. <laughs> I, is this is your true wish? Your crow tribe and our white skills have the same ancestors. Yet your father wise Telga, the old crow, decided to join the eight tribes to annihilate the white skulls. That was rubbish. But, if this is really what you want, then it's mine too. I'll find out where my father is and separate his body from his soul. You will do the deed.
The safety of the women and children are of utmost importance. The white skull remnants may invade and murder all the families over here. I was sitting beside a bonfire like this with my father. But his head was taken by the white skulls. I can't return him to the sun without his head. My father must be lost between the sun and the moon. Stay strong. One can return to the sun at any time. Eventually, one day, we can take his head from the white skulls. Then we can send him to the sun. Is that true? One can return at any time. Can I really send back my father to the sun at any time? Why would I lie to you? Years ago, the youngest son of Elder Kunchir of Tarkhad was killed by these white skulls. They took his head. When Kunchir was suffering greatly because of this loss, thinking he can't return his son as a whole, the father of the cursed Archil of Akhtchin dragged the white skulls down and got his head back so they returned him as a whole. Is that so? It seems so. Then my Bordoi, as the daughter and hire to the chief Hadran and Sarin, I must give you a crucial order. While I am in pursuit of white skulls, keep our Sarin people safe beside the crow land. If you are there, I can focus on my mission. Things are chaotic towards the east. 
so I wanted to come with you. But again, if you order me, I will have to obey them. These bright drops open my eyes for a while, so I see like a clear sky. Forgive me, my lord, if I may be blunt. Since you were blind when you were born, this substance cannot perform the miracle of immortality. An acquired fault in body can be healed fully. A fault born with the body cannot be healed fully. Once I have delivered the fate, and you are the ascended to the mastery of fate, the worthy one, to become the Khan, the overlord of the world. The heavens shall grant light to your bodily eyes, as well as your mind's eye to see the beyond. No one can defy the fate imposed by the heavens, my lord. The heavens will surely be pleased with you. Stop with me the flattery and talk with all sense. Yes, lord. This ear is really the ear of fate. The heavens put a trial on us. Do you see, my lord? Chief Arzai of the Wolf tribe has been killed by the White Skulls on his way back. Also, the High Chief Jarai has been fatally wounded. His days are numbered now. <laughs> then grow Sarin. Angol and Jonos are without leaders. Now they are doomed to extinction. <sighs> now it's my time. I shall call on Khadan men and ravage Angols and the Wolf tribe. You are brave and daring, my lord. But Irtai took his wounded father and managed to flee from that place. The high chiefdom shall be passed down to Irtai. If Irtai holds such power, he will appoint one of his lackeys to be the worthy one, so he will be the fate master. In that case, after 30 days, in accord with the oath, he will ask for your head, my lord. And that too, before the assembly. <sighs> My oath was merely a trick to buy time to prepare men for great battles. 
Even if I bring Azar's head to Irthai, he will not put his neck in front of me. I have bid my men to a faraway land to bring Temur blades to me. When they return, I shall bring ruin to Irthai and I'll do it. Your idea to destroy him once and for all before he musters men and strength is such a brilliant one. If Irtai becomes the High Chief and unites the seven tribes, then Khadan tribe shall be at a great disadvantage. And if we defeat him, before he consolidates his position, we will have one less obstacle in our long journey. My lord, your words are wise, and your deeds are effective, and you are brave. You will find a way to heal my eyes permanently. Yeah, yes lord. Grandfather! Grandfather! Father! Grandfather! made his way home but at the auction border he said his last orders to me and ascended to the sun Irte, I am here to inherit the high chiefdom and Perform the duty of keeping the peace in the steppes. Elder Arsai, to forge a relationship between Angul and Wolves, 
and keep the enemies at bay. He promised his daughter Sarkoon's hand to me in a blood contract. By the will of Chief Arsai and Father Jarai, Chono's hand, Angol shall be united as one. Kadan and White Skulls shall be annihilated. Men prepare for your arms and horses for war. Yes, my lord. The diseased elder shall be sanctified in seven days. As this is our tradition, when should we send Chief Jirai to the sun, his wife, four bannermen, one of his children, three adult cows, eight handful of crystal, and eight horses shall accompany him. Since the eldest son Irtai is to become the high chief, the youngest son Maglen must guide his father to the sun. If anyone else volunteer to escort Chief Jarai, prepare yourself for seven days and take care of the deeds in this world. I wish to be sanctified with my father. I am permitted to go with them to the sun, am I right? Your father left a clear instruction for you. If you offend him, he won't be able to find his way to the sun. He will be stuck between the worlds and become a curse. Obey his last wish! You are destined to carry the unified bloodline of Angol and Jonos. So fulfill it. Go out. Sweetheart, you can't be repulsed by the deceased being sanctified. If you can't do it, I can finish it. You will also do the same for me later. Go and rest. No, mother. Do not worry at all. I wouldn't be repulsed by my father. I was just unsettled to see you grieve. To think that you will be gone with him. I am deeply troubled. It is 
heaven's will for a woman to depart with his man. We cannot defy that. But my son Mechlin, to think that he'll have to go to the sun without family. I am endlessly tormented as his mother. Soon we'll return to the sun, but you'll be here for Irte and Khaftai. Also, once Irte take Saur Khun as his second wife. After that, unpleasant days await you. Sweetheart, you have a child. Stay strong, my daughter. Mother, Dark days are upon us. <laughs> a mother of a child rises and a tree with root thrives. If not Irtai, then Khaftai will aid and embrace you. Sweetheart. <laughs> Why are you encumbered with somber thoughts? If a chief goes for a second marriage, he won't be punished by the heavens. Does anyone else other than you have a four-edged torture? What are you asking? I was just preparing to sanctify father. And then I saw... What did you see? Was mother there? I wouldn't dare to show your wicked sin to your mother. The weapon that took our father's life wasn't Azar's arrow. It was your orchard dagger. Keep your mouth shut. Kadun and Azar have killed my father. Khadun and Azar have orchard dagger as well. Confess. You don't have the power to make me confess. You robbed Sorkhun from your brother and you want her for yourself. Uncle Arsa, I will never give her daughter to you. Women 
You are being vile. I wish you have heard. Uncle Arts, I say the words. You flap your filthy tongue on behalf of deceased lords. Declare yourself as the high chief and steal your brother's loved ones. You know you are the vile one. I'll swallow your tongue. If my furry reaches your deaf tribe, there won't be a baby with your blood left alive. All these years of warming your bed and I wish I had known that you were cold-blooded enough to kill your own father to become the High Chief. Some sacrifices are justifiably needed for a greater deed. <laughs> Think of what I said. Let it sink in every morning. <laughs>